Hello all and welcome to the Lucretia Report. I'm Ian and today... This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge sanctioned by the U.S. government. Listening Those to the speaker. In favor, please say aye. Those opposed, say no. no. Opinion of the chair, the eyes have it. Not long ago, the U.S. House of Representatives voted on rules to govern the public portion of the ongoing impeachment inquiry. Officially, this was just a procedural vote, but really it was a symbolic vote to approve of the impeachment inquiry. This vote saw no Republican members of the House vote in favor, drawing the ire of Republican leadership. Republicans insist that the impeachment is an illegitimate display of partisanship. They cite the fact that no Republican members voted for the impeachment inquiry and say that impeachment must be bipartisan. But this is not, as Nancy Pelosi pledged and promised it would be, Chris, a, quote, overwhelmingly bipartisan move toward impeachment. Impeachment is so divisive to a nation, it has to be overwhelming, compelling, and bipartisan to ever move forward. Let's just look past the fact that the impeachment inquiries against Richard Nixon and Bill Clinton didn't even have a vote of this sort in the House floor. Let's also ignore the fact that when the Judiciary Committee voted to start an impeachment inquiry against Richard Nixon, it was a party-line vote with all Democrats for and all Republicans against. So I guess you're right, Republicans. I guess there is no precedent for this. Of course, the reason that there is no precedent is because no house has ever had to take this vote before, and because the reason that it was taken was because you insisted that the inquiry would not be legitimate until it was taken. Of course, we'll also ignore the fact that even though you said that the inquiry would not be legitimate until this vote was taken, you still say it's illegitimate now that the vote is taken. I would never accuse you of arguing in bad faith, so we're going to ignore all of that. And we're going to look at how in 2019 politics, it is impossible to have a bipartisan vote on impeachment, at least as things stand now. And that's because in 2019, any Republican who comes out against Donald Trump very soon ceases to be a Republican. One of the things that Kevin McCarthy and Jim Jordan ignore when they complain that the impeachment vote was quote unquote, not bipartisan is that it actually was bipartisan. Maybe not in an official sense, but in a practical sense. I say this because of the vote of Congressman Justin Amash for impeachment. Justin Amash used to be a member of the Freedom Caucus and of the Tea Party. He describes himself as 100% pro-life. Justin Amash thinks that the EPA is overreaching, he voted to repeal the Affordable Care Act, and he was a founding member of the Second Amendment Caucus. Justin Amash is as conservative as they come. He is a lifelong Republican, and until not long ago, he is just the type of Republican that you would have presented as an archetype of the party. He really only disagrees with the rest of the Republicans in the House on one issue and that's Donald Trump. After being apparently the only Republican in the House of Representatives who actually took the time to read the Mueller report, Justin Amash realized that Donald Trump's a criminal, that he's abused his office, that he's lied to and manipulated the American people, and that he's corrupt. And he said to himself, well, that's not good. That's impeachable, right? So Justin Amash said to his Republican colleagues, look guys, we always say that we are all about the Constitution, and right now the Constitution is under threat and we have to protect it. We have to impeach Donald Trump. Who's with me? And Republicans said, get him out of here. Amash had the courage to disagree with his colleagues on literally one issue. But this is the one issue that you're not allowed to have another point of view on. Soon later, Amash was forced out of the Republican Party. Michigan Congressman Justin Amash announcing today that he is leaving the Republican Party, blaming the current state of partisanship. Now, Amash still sits in the House of Representatives, but he sits there as an independent and not a Republican, while the Republicans try to bring in a candidate to his district to boot out one of their own. Even if Amash sits in the House as an independent, in his heart, in his positions, for all practical purposes, 
He is a Republican, just an exiled one. Amash isn't the only Republican forced out of the party for having the courage to stand up to Donald Trump. Two Republican senators, Jeff Flake from Arizona and Bob Corker from Tennessee, were both forced out of Congress for their opposition to Donald Trump. They opposed Donald Trump's behavior, his corruption, his recklessness, and for that, they were forced to retire from the Senate by their own party. Senator Bob Corker is sticking with his decision to retire at the end of his term. So regarding all of the retirements in the House, Mr. President, very quickly, you, you, you suggested Who that... Who is retiring? You said that many of the retirements that happened in the House made it very difficult... Many retirements, for, yeah. ...that made it very difficult for you in this election cycle, and that it was because they were chairmen, it were chairmanships that were vacated. But Jeff Flake wasn't a chairman of a committee, and Paul Ryan also retired the cycle. So why do you think that is? Whose fault is it that there in were so Jeff many retirements? In Jeff Flake's case, it's me. Pure and simple. I retired him. I'm very proud of it. I did the country a great service. Go ahead. Give him that. Give him that. He is retired. I'd like to call it another word, but we're going to treat him with great respect. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Jeff Flake, that's another beauty. Go ahead. Shep Smith was a conservative anchor on Fox News. He had been at Fox for years, but he dared to report facts. He dared to report facts that were not favorable to Donald Trump. And he even called out other members of his network when they were lying to their viewers. And for this offense, pretty soon he was forced off the air. This is my last newscast here. Thank you for watching today and over the decades as I traveled to many of your communities and anchored this program, Studio B and Fox Report, plus endless marathon hours of breaking news. There are no less than three other candidates for the Republican nomination for president this year in former Congressman Joe Walsh and former Governors Bill Weld and Mark Sanford. But instead of giving their voters the opportunity to choose their own nominee, many states have been canceling their Republican primaries. GOP challengers to President Trump are calling crying foul over reports that four states, South Carolina, Nevada, Arizona, and Kansas, are poised to cancel their 2020 presidential primaries and caucuses. That would significantly hinder even a long shot against Trump for the GOP nomination. And one of those challengers, Joe Walsh, is tweeting like a mob boss. Donald Trump orders the elimination of primaries. This is wrong. This is undemocratic. This is what a political party does when it serves a king. Another GOP candidate, Bill Weld, also tweeting, Donald Trump, by turns arrogant and paranoid, has made no secret of the fact that he wishes to be crowned a president rather than elected. <laughs> that might be fine in a monarchy, but we overthrew ours two centuries ago. This isn't something they're doing to help the party. These are Republican primaries where only Republicans can vote. These are supposed to give Republicans the opportunity to voice who they want to represent their party. But for fear that some Republicans might not vote the way that Donald Trump wants them to, states have been canceling these elections. If you're so confident in Donald Trump's support, why cancel them? There can be no bipartisanship when it comes to impeachment. There can be no Republican opposition to Donald Trump because any Republican who expresses disagreement with Donald Trump is quickly purged from the party. The Republicans maintain a monolith by showing that no dissent will be tolerated, that anyone who does not abide by the party line will be quickly eliminated and replaced by a loyalist. And when they purge dissenters like Amash and Flake and Corker, they set an example for would-be opponents of Donald Trump that says, shut up and sit down. I want to look at the tweet that Donald Trump posted when Justin Amash left the Republican Party. Right, well, of course, the president uh, jumped in. He tweeted this morning at 6.05. Uh, he says, great news for the Republican Party as one of the dumbest and most disloyal men in Congress is quitting the party. No collusion, no obstruction. Knew he couldn't get the nomination to run again in the great state of Michigan, already being challenged for his seat, a total loser. There's one word that he uses there, disloyal. It doesn't seem that he means disloyal to America or even disloyal to the party. It appears that Donald Trump means disloyal to himself. Donald Trump has a history of demanding loyalty, not to the country or the party, but to Donald Trump. To Donald Trump, being disloyal to him is the greatest crime that a person can commit. When a politician demands loyalty, not to the country or to the people, but to themselves, that only ever means one thing. That only ever means that their interests 
and the interests of the nation are not aligned, that they place their interests before the interests of the people, and that they want to drag you along that path with them. I leave you with this. When Adolf Hitler took power in Germany, he made all members of the German military and civil service swear an oath of loyalty. They didn't swear it to Germany. They didn't swear it to the people, or to the German constitution, or to the German law. What they said was, I swear to God this sacred oath to the leader of the German Reich and the people, Adolf Hitler. Seek Semper Tyrannus.